Greetings, Williams family. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're preparing for Easter. Spend some time in God's Word, particularly read the Passion stories in the Gospels as you reflect, as you uh, come to terms with your own sinfulness and need for God's redemption and forgiveness. These are important days for us uh, individually and as a, as a community. So I hope that you'll spend time doing that. As you and I think about uh, what God did for us, we realize that God is so concerned about his children. He, um, he loves us in ways we can hardly imagine. One of the ways he loves us is that he plants people in our lives. Uh, I don't think um, things like that are coincidence. In fact, I don't even believe in coincidence. I think there's a purpose in everything, even the painful things. Speaking of pain, I recently lost a friend. Um, his name was Fran. Fran um, was a part of my ministry uh, as I began serving at First Baptist Tallahassee. Uh, he was one of our Bible study leaders for our older high school kids. Great, great teacher. Um, he had the, the skills to do that. He had the background to do that. He was a, uh, a preacher's kid. Uh, graduated from seminary, well well trained in theological uh, education, um, but there are bigger plans for Fran than just being the Sunday school teacher. He was also very active in other aspects of our our ministry. He and I had a, a personal friendship, that included such things as playing uh, pickup basketball together and going out. To, uh, he and his wife, my wife, we just enjoyed each other. He was truly a good friend. Um, Fran became a minister there at First Baptist uh, for a number of years, I think about two te- decades. And much of what Fran did was he just brought calm. He, um, he was such a steadying influence and uh, made a real difference. Um, one of his greatest ministries was helping people in the throes of grief. Um, he just was a remarkable, a remarkable guy. Uh, he was felled by a stroke and never recovered. It lingered for months and months. So while I'm glad for him, I pray for his wife, Nancy, and for their boys and for all of that family. Um, Fran's relationship with me w- was such that I referred to him as my Barnabas. In the New Testament, we meet uh, Joseph, called Barnabas, his nickname, um, which meant son of encouragement. Joseph um, was an important part of the early church. In the fourth chapter of Acts, uh, we read about a time when the church was uh, trying to, to move forward and, and needed people to, to um, participate in a number of ways, including financially. And we're told in, uh, in Acts chapter 4, there was a Levite, a native of Cy- Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So he was a generous spirit. And um, we learn later that he was a, a very important leader in that young church. When there were reports of an outbreak of um, believers up in Antioch in Syria, um, the, the people thought so well of Barnabas that they sent him up as their emissary to check out this new movement to see if it was a, a sham, a flash in the pan, whether it was the real thing. And as Barnabas spent some time with those folks, he realized that the Holy Spirit was doing amazing things there. And he was rejoicing. He was thrilled with what he saw God doing. He also realized something that this young church in that part of the world needed a steady hand, uh, needed a, a strong leader, a charismatic leader, a leader with the right kind of skill set. And he knew he wasn't that person. He wasn't the out front rah-rah guy. He wasn't the person who uh, had the strongest presence. But he knew somebody, and that somebody uh, was Paul. We know about uh, Paul's conversion, uh, Saul, the the uh, leader of the storm troops of the temple who were uh, persecuting believers of Jesus. Uh, Saul had been converted on the road to Damascus. And then after his conversion, he, um, he spent some time in preparation, went through some uh, frustration because he kept thinking, well, why isn't God taking me to the next step? Did he, he didn't realize that 
God would be using Barnabas to help him take that next step. And Barnabas believed Paul was the right person, and he was, to go to Antioch and help the church get on stable ground. He also stood with Paul under some real challenging times when people were very suspicious of him, thinking that he was a a wolf in sheep's clothing, an enemy in the camp. Um, And he um, stood firmly by Paul's side, shoulder to shoulder, and faced his critics. Um, It was Barnabas. Barnabas' conviction that helped sway the day uh, for Paul as he initiated his own ministry. Um, Paul was um, very, very close to Barnabas. They began their mission enterprise, uh, the first mission trip that Paul took. Barnabas was by his side. They uh, had a disagreement that's also uh, related to us in Acts chapter 15 over um, a kinsman of Barnabas named John Mark. That separation was painful for both of those men. Thankfully, they were uh, reunited later and uh, remain close as brothers in Christ. Um, The reason I think of of, uh, Fran as my Barnabas was that I cannot tell you how many times uh, Fran would write me a note, uh, send me a message of some kind, or just uh, have a conversation with me where he affirmed my ministry and where he encouraged me. Um, He didn't blow smoke at me. He wasn't trying to butter me up. He just continually uh, stood by my side as a brother. And I knew he prayed for me. I knew he encouraged me. And the truth of the matter is, in our life, um, we need people like Paul and Barnabas and even a Timothy. As you know, Timothy was the protege of Paul. And uh, he had come to faith in in the Lord through the witness and and, uh, testimony of his mother and grandmother. When Paul met Timothy, he could see the potential in this young man and knew that uh, with the right kind of guidance, Timothy could be a strong leader. And Paul uh, mentored uh, Timothy, gave him some responsibilities, ultimately entrusted him with more responsibility, became a pastor at Ephesus. And um, Paul poured his life into Timothy. We need somebody like that. We need a Paul. We need a mentor. We need somebody that we can turn to for advice or counsel, somebody we can trust, somebody whose word um, we would consider very, very important. We need somebody like that in our life. And I imagine, uh, as I could think of several men and women who uh, fulfill that role for me, you should be doing the same thing. Who are the Pauls in your life? Who are the people that you turn to? Uh, Whose wisdom do you seek? Um, We need that kind of person in our life. And we need to be that kind of person in other people's lives. And that brings us to Timothy. We need a Timothy. We need somebody that we invest in, somebody that we see potential in, and we're willing to do whatever it takes to see that person grow and develop and mature. Paul did that for Timothy. We need somebody like that, particularly at this time in the life of Williams, We need to be looking around for uh, the younger generations um, and serve as mentors, as encouragers, um, as teachers, as counselors, as friends, uh, because the next generation will step into our shoes. They'll stand on our shoulders as we've stood on the shoulders of those who've preceded us. So we all need a Timothy. And yes, indeed, we need a Barnabas. Uh, Barnabas uh, was not the kind of person who would um, just flatter Paul. Uh, While he was a a good friend and and did indeed encourage Paul, uh, Barnabas told Paul the truth. Sometimes Paul didn't want to hear it. Uh, And Barnabas wasn't perfect. He had his his own role in that disagreement we spoke about. But um, he was the kind of person that you never needed to turn around and wonder where Barnabas was. He was going to be right there. He was going to support you. He was going to do whatever he could to make sure that you felt you were safe in that relationship. You may have people like that in your life. I hope you do. It's been said that uh, you can only count your truly uh, best friends uh, on one hand and probably not need all the fingers. That may be true. Uh, It's hard to find somebody who's a soulmate in that regard. Uh, Typically, it's somebody of the same gender. Sometimes it's a person that we know through family or through work. Um, It could be any number of settings. For me, um, some of those guys were teammates. Um, When I was playing ball, um, I had to be that for them. They had to be that for me. 
it's important for us to have somebody who uh, won't let us get away with our stuff. We need somebody who can hold us accountable and can uh, help us to be real. We need all three of those kinds of individuals in our lives. And in the New Testament, we have a record of how significant those relationships were in the birth, the development, and expansion of the church. As we think about the future for our church, we know that we need to um, find people at every generation who will lock into the mission and to um, stand alongside as we do the work of God together. Uh, this is a blessed place. I hope you feel it. I hope you're committed to it. And I hope that you're building the relationships that last. For me, the next time I see Fran, um, I'll have left this earth and um, I'll see him in, in heaven. And when I do, there'll be a, another hug. We like to do that with each other. We might even shoot a, a game of 21. I don't know. But I know this, a guy like that blessed my life. And I'll always be grateful. Bless you, Williams. Hope you have a great week.